Being an elite point guard means playing super cognitively. It means slowing the game down for yourself and reading the game two steps ahead, plus helping your team do the same. So studying the game, understanding these concepts, and then going out and trying them will set you apart more than you would ever imagine. In part one, we covered a lot, including pace, pick and roll reads, and more. If you haven't checked that out yet, no worries, just go tap in after this. But I truly think this will take you guys to the next level as a floor general, and I'm hyped to see you guys' results once you start to apply it all. Also, apologies for the lack of content lately. I've been on our annual Europe tour, but we got a crazy amount of content coming. I've learned so much, and I'm excited for you guys to see what we got in store. So first off is understanding certain advanced patterns in the game that tend to happen over and over again. Certain opportunities, so to speak, that if you look for in the game, there's a pretty good chance they'll be there. So basketball isn't a perfect science where it's if this happens, then something else happens, but it definitely has these things that happen pretty damn often. And the best point guards have incredible feel and instincts to know when to look for these. So first off is looking over the first option or past the first option. In other words, if your first option to pass it to gets covered up, like this cut here, for example, defender steps in so he can't make the pass, there's probably a teammate open behind them or someone else who is open, like this guy. Why? Well, because the defense knew that this was the first option, like this roller here, they cover it up. Somebody had to leave their man to go do that. So boom, open pass. So this can be a pick and roll, it can be on a drive where your dump off pass gets covered up. There are plenty of possibilities here, but it's an easy concept to understand. This takes looking into that third layer of defense too. So not just seeing what's in front of you, but past that. But you'll start seeing these far more advanced reads. Next are backdoor passes. So if you're dribbling towards a teammate, then there's a shot that they will be open for a backdoor cut. Whether you're dribbling towards them for a handoff or just going across the court, defenders getting distracted is a real possibility. And so is gravity, which is when defenders just naturally get pulled towards the ball handler or just some player that they're worried about because they're preoccupied by them. They don't want them to score. They don't want them to get into a good position. So that'll open up these cuts very often. And then sometimes just about being over aggressive and trying to jam that handoff. Then that teammate can just go back door from there. Either way, this is something to look for consistently. Next is when to look for deep outlets or kicks up the court to start transition opportunities, which I'd say are most available on one, long rebounds. Number two, bad shots when the other team is kind of pissed off at their teammate and they don't really want to get back eagerly. And three, at the end of long possessions when players are tired, and especially when you have momentum on your side. It's the midpoint here in the open. And of course, quarter. turnovers. If you get a steal, probably look up court. These are easy opportunities to get your team very efficient points and can even involve telling your teammates like, yo, as soon as we get the rock, just go. And speaking of transition, finding the trailer is a super easy pattern in what we call semi-transition where the defense is back, but not fully set. Many times they're most focused on getting back to protect the rim. So this trailer coming down will either have a shot or they'll have momentum like here against a scrambled defense. Definitely something to try to find if there's nothing in that first transition push. The next one we briefly touched on in part one when we talked about reads and patterns on the pick and roll. So we won't go over all of these ball screen reads, but I wanna talk about one quickly. What happens on aggressive ball screen coverage? Many times when a defender aggressively shows like this, it's not easy to get the ball to the roller here. But if you're able to get the ball out to a player that's one pass away to make this simple pass, then it's a 4v3 for them. And if they attack this, it can make the game much easier. So definitely start to look for this if you're coming off ball screens as a point guard. The next pattern is on a baseline drive like this, where most defenders will turn to face you. And because of that, they'll lose tabs of your teammates. So begin to look for these 45 cuts where teammates are streaking in from the wing as well as kicking to the opposite corner or a player cutting from there. If you can get baseline and turn players towards there, it opens these up a lot. And finally, and one of the best ever are slips. If you see a teammate setting a screen and the defense is either switching too high or not communicating, these slips are often very open, but the key is seeing them before they get open so you can make that pass right on time. Now there are plenty more of these, but if you start looking for these patterns, you go in with a plan. The game slows down because you know kind of what your possibilities are, rather than just hoping somebody opens up and you see it. Next, let's talk about pass timing. One concept that many players struggle with is getting too deep into the defense. Don't get me wrong, attacking the defense and getting into these areas opens up a lot. But sometimes getting too far in here means more hands around you as you're in the trees and more time for these defenders to get back once they realize that there's help. So sometimes just engaging the defense is better than attacking. Like here, he just takes one dribble downhill and towards these defenders, 
So now they step in. In other words, he's engaged them. And now this pass is open. Or here where he gets an advantage and then passes before he even gets into the thick of things. Other times, attack hard, but also be able to pass at the beginning or middle of drives as soon as you draw defenders. Again, many players will take an extra dribble to fully draw defenders in or look to score. But notice how these guys are letting that pass fly earlier in the attack or the drive as soon as they notice that they've drawn multiple defenders. Also, keep in mind that redirecting your drives across the court is a great tactic here because if you take this angle, you're not really risking getting too deep into this defense, but you're still creating gravity on these defenders as you go across the court, which is something we talked about in terms of creation lanes in the first video. And pace is huge here too. You don't have to drive as fast as you can, especially once you have an advantage. You can oftentimes slow down a bit create some contact, take a good angle to allow yourself time to read the play and give yourself more control and composure. And finally, on this past timing topic, I wanna to cover a super simple way to think about playmaking. Your mission as a point guard should be creating many games of 2v1 or 3v2, maybe even 4v3 within the game. In other words, if you can draw multiple defenders and make two guard one, it opens up opportunities. Like on all of these plays, you see these little mini games of the defense outnumbered. And that's when you cash in on opportunities. So continuously ask yourself, how can I make one guard two? Coming off a of pick and roll, transition, driving into space, the defenders must now cover up, and much more. There are plenty of options here. And also pretty relevant here is pass patience. Slowing down your pass sometimes and not rushing it to make sure that one, it's the right pass, and two, to see if anything else opens up. Like here, he almost makes a pass and he's like, nah, let me wait a little bit, let this advantage develop a bit, and then try to make the pass from there. And on a similar note, make the simple passes. We all wanna make the Teodosic passes and those will happen, but sometimes the simple pass is the best one. Actually, most of the time. Then on the flip side of patience though, the best point guards are ready to make passes at any time, mostly by letting this ball float. The more time that the ball is in your hand, the better. You can't make a pass when the ball is going up to or down from your hand. So gaining the control to float the rock gives you expanded windows of opportunities to actually make that pass. Okay, next up is one that doesn't get talked about much, but is very valid. When to just go get a bucket as a point guard. So as a rule of thumb, unless a player is just clearly the best player on the court by far, I'll only coach players up to shoot 1v1 ISO shots if one, they get thrown a grenade at the end of a shot clock, so they just have to create and put it up. Two, they get a switch, either a big on a small or a small on a big, and it's just barbecue chicken. And three, if you're hot and in the flow state and it just kind of happens. Again, this should still be a good shot. And usually this is only for pretty talented scores. Now, sometimes you'll be able to tell if the defense is tired, weaker than you, distracted. And that could be a time to go as well. But otherwise, you really shouldn't be going ISO much. You'll be working in the pick and roll and transition off the catch and more where you can work with advantages. Then coming back to mismatches, this is a very nuanced but important part of being a point guard. If you can consistently create them, it puts your team in a better position. Here are a few ways to create mismatches. Number one, using ball screens and creating quick distance from them. So this guard is like, yo, there's no way I'm getting back to there in time. You switch with me. Now you got a big on a small and vice versa. Second is transition, engaging a big man who's not yours and then trying to get them to switch. And third is using off ball movement to create chaos and force players to switch on off ball screens, handoffs, cuts, and more. All of these create easy advantages for your team that make the game easier. And then finally is understanding what to do when your team doesn't have an advantage. In other words, point guards must be elite at understanding that there's a neutral defense here. Every defender is set, there are no mismatches, and then quickly getting into something else. This could be a get action, this could be a handoff, a ball screen, or just quickly running a play. But as soon as you see this as a point guard, do something that now creates an advantage for your team, rather than just going ISO just because you don't have anything. So if you can understand these, you'll be on a new level as a point guard. They take experience, but once you start to sharpen them, you'll end up on the court much more trusted by your coaches, trusted by your teammates, and building this level of IQ can definitely change your career. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to stay tuned for more IQ videos like this. I think these will really elevate you guys' play to a new level. Make sure to check out all the programs in our virtual academy, all the camps that we're gonna be coming around and doing this year around the world our Summer Academy in Miami, and a lot more. Stay tuned.